All right, welcome back to Fuck Socks, the podcast, episode 50. Today on the show, a little boy made a video of him putting on makeup. We'll show you all the creepy comments he got, and we'll tell you what the FBI is doing instead of caring. Then, Richard Rapoy continues to obsess over the massive fake milkers shop teacher out of Canada. Massive fake milkers there. A crazy guy went into a McDonald's and started smashing it up with an axe. He's since been let out and now claims he's the victim. And last but not least, our favorite Dash Dabrowski continues to spiral in this week's housekeeping. All this and more. It's Fuckus Talks, a podcast, episode 50, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than action because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. That was the first time I've ever seen you do truly one for one. That was a true one for one. Guys, this week's episode is brought to you by our friends over at Undertag. Guys, I am never going to waste your time with products that aren't America first. Undertag underwear is exactly that. It's an underwear product that is better than the competition. There's better ingredients. It's nice, elastic. It doesn't shrink. It doesn't get those little things, those little balls of fuzz on them. It doesn't smell. It's antibacterial material. It feels great to wear. They look fantastic. And they're cheaper than the competition by about 30%. A portion of the profits on undertax sales go to foundations that help sex trafficking victims, which is fantastic. They're America first company. These have been battle tested by our special forces as well. If you use code FLECKIS20, you get 20% off your order site-wide. So anything you like from Undertack, you can get 20% off your order. Buy it from a company like Undertack. They're fantastic. They love us. We love them right back. If you guys show me a receipt from Undertack, I will give you a base mug. Thank you, Undertack, for supporting. GetUndertack.com is the website. Use code FLECKIS20 for 20% off site-wide. Let's get into housekeeping. All right, we made it. Thank you to Undertack for sponsoring uh, this week's housekeeping. We have some updates for you. We try to keep everyone updated on what's causing heart problems and irregular heartbeats these days. Uh, now, women under 50 are getting more heart attacks than usual. People, it's a wide range, too. It's a very wide range. What does that headline say? Uh, it says women under 50 uh, are becoming increasingly more, or heart attacks are becoming increasingly more common in women under 50, and medical experts can't figure out how. Can't figure out how. Why is this happening? Nobody knows. I also saw an article that said teens are getting irregular heartbeats from air pollution. That's something to be very concerned about. Uh, We actually saw an ad play the other day, which is weird because I'd never seen this growing up. Uh, There was an ad that played about kids getting myocarditis. Yeah. I've never seen this before, but let that rip. I've been into fashion since I can remember. But one day I had a stomach ache so bad I didn't want to do anything. The team at New York Presbyterian said it was actually my heart. It was severely swollen. Something called myocarditis. But doctors gave me medicines and used machines to control my heartbeat. They saved me. So now I can become the next great fashion designer. Wow. So kids are getting myocarditis. There's now ads on TV for kids with myocarditis problems. Who knows where that could come from? I've never seen an ad for a myocarditis uh, awareness in my whole life, uh, but I guess it's the probably the climate change and the air pollution. It has to be. Um, and the funny part is it makes a big scene of it at the end of that commercial. Doctor saved me. Yeah. And it's like, what did the doctors do before that? Yeah, they saved you, but they also <laughs> held you down and made you do something maybe you shouldn't yeah. have done. But meanwhile, you know, if you mention the word vaccine, there's still a big banner that comes across your social media stuff. And mm-hmm. But, you know, myocarditis for kids, it's just... It's their just their hearts happening. are enlarging. It's the air pollution. They breathe it in, sucks their heart out. <laughs> uh, moving on. Uh, we're still in housekeeping. We have very important housekeeping. We have a great episode today. A lot of great topics. Uh, people are saying inherently too much. Yeah. The term an, inherently. Mm-hmm trying to sound smart. A lot of people like debating like ideas and like politics and all that stuff. It comes up a lot, but the, the word inherently I think is being used too much as a crux for people who are trying to sound smart and aren't that smart. So if you say inherently a lot, I would knock it off. Also on the chopping block, I think we've even mentioned this before in that regard, 
Okay. I'm hearing in that regard too much. It's like some filler language that people who try to sound smart are saying. So if you're saying inherently or in that regard, you're not that smart, I caught you. <laughs> <laughs> the only time I say inherently is when it's something's inherently dangerous. Yeah. That's kind of the co to phrase. Yeah. So don't, that one's excluded. Other than that, it's not allowed. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are commenting on the last uh, episode about my beard. I'm getting a lot of DMs. Uh, what am I, what am I going to do with it? People are asking. To be honest, I've never had the beard this long, and I'm going to let it keep going because I want to see what happens next. He has no plan. Is I basically have no plan. The, the gist of that. I have no plan, and I packed my clippers for the move to New Orleans, and I only packed the the one the one to go like one inch or whatever it's called, mm-hmm. and that's for buzzing my head. Uh, so I don't have any real options. I'm not going to go to a place to have them trim it. So we're going to just let it keep going and whatever happens, happens. If you went to a place to trim it, you'd come back with like the straightest edges ever. It'd be like a DJ Khaled scenario. So I'm glad you're not doing that. Yeah. But I think you do need to do some trimming, some light trimming. Yeah. Some light trimming. Maybe it's going a little wider than I like, but I've never had it this long. I don't know what's going to happen next. Look at this. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. Isn't that crazy? A lot of beard here. I've never had this much beard. I'm excited to see what happens next. At a certain point, it just starts to layering and just like rolls down like yeah. Ian Smith Fitness. ZZ Top, Ian Smith Fitness. Yeah. Okay. So we'll see. I'm excited to see. We'll see what happens. Um, next, this is actually We'll super see what in- happens in that regard. Yeah. Inherently, I... My beard is inherently <laughs> big. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Next, this is a very important thing. I was attacked at an event I did at a college campus a few days ago. Yeah. I was in the classroom. I was showing them memes that I made. Mm -hmm. And then someone came in, a lunatic, and he smashed the projector and almost, you know, it started, it got an aggressive, it was aggressive. Caused a scene. Caused a huge scene. The man got arrested, thank God. Uh, But I was attacked Here's here it is happening right here. You see me there. I'm drinking the water. Showing your Kamala meme. Yep. Here's me. I'm drinking water. I'm playing the meme I made. And then some crazy guy comes in and kicks over my set. And all I was trying to do was show these college kids the memes I made. You're on a meme tour, right? I'm on a meme tour right yeah. now. So that was very dangerous. If you're in audio only. Uh, you got to go to the video. <laughs> you have to go to the video this week. <laughs> the bit's not going to get explained any further. The di- yeah, exactly. The bit will not be explained any further. Uh, next. Now, we live in New Orleans now, so we're very aware of our situation. We've always been hyper aware. Uh, a few episodes ago, we talked about STP, which is Slit Throat Patrol, which is what we say to each other if someone's coming who looks sketchy. Mm-hmm. So if me and Richard Rapway are hanging out in the subway, and there's like a guy coming who might push you on the tracks, you go STP, STP. And you kind of look around and make sure you're aware of your surroundings. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a situation in this video. Um, what we have here now what we call the kill box. Because we're driving more. We're not on the subway or anything. We walk around definitely a bunch, but it's more driving. And the kill box rule is you never pull all the way up to the car in front of you. You got to keep your eyes to the side and make sure you have a route to escape. Exactly. Right? We have to so- basically assume that we're going to get... Car mugged, jumped, yeah. groups of people coming to attack. <laughs> We're going to get driven into a kill box and then just lit up. So, yeah, we so always need an out. We're avoiding that. We're avoiding the kill box. Here is a video of someone who almost got robbed or mugged or carjacked or killed, uh, but they avoided the kill box. Check this out. So, car stops in front of them. Some black hooded people try to get out, and it's all cinder blocks. And then they just, bam, you're out of there. Yeah, they're not getting kill boxed. Yeah. We had this funny idea that I was like, imagine those people pulled over and we're like, we need help. And we have a flat tire. They really like, had an emergency. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Our pregnant wife's in the back. Yeah, help us. And then, nope, I'm not getting kill boxed. And then he's run through them and knocked their door off. Now your door's gone. Yeah. Um, we're still in housekeeping. It's a very important housekeeping. Dash Dabrowski, our boy. Yeah. Continues to spiral. Mm-hmm. L- check out this r- tweet he did recently. All right, so it says, Trump is returning to Mar-a-Lago, the place where he unlawfully kept nuclear documents hidden from the FBI slash DOJ. This is no different than Jeffrey Dahmer being allowed to return to his apartment where he kept rotting human corpses (laughs) and skulls stuffed in formaldehyde-filled drums. It's the exact same thing. Donald Trump and Jeffrey Dahmer, same guy, same type of offense. 
it's no different. Trump going back to Mar-a-Lago after committing no crimes and doing nothing, it's the same as Jeffrey Dahmer going back to where he kept all the dead bodies. So I, I know that Dash doesn't really believe this stuff, mm-hmm. but he must have fun coming up with the most absurd stuff he can possibly say, right? Yeah. It, it's like an exercise for him. Like, how can I, oh boy, how can I do this to the next level? Yeah, absolutely. He's spiraling. You go through his content too, especially on Instagram, and you go through the comments. Mm-hmm. And it's just all of our followers, all of the podcast listeners being like, oh, you got him this time, Dash. Or like, oh, boy. Like, they're just making fun of him. Like, one out of ten is maybe like, good job, Dash. Good comparison. I hope they get Trump. Like, there's no – he has no real followers. Yeah. And I think they're – and those are like – when you see the NPC memes with the, you know, stick figure face, like, that's who's in Dash's comments, who's supportive. I had the top comment on one of his posts and – like the half of the other comments, like the leftist comments on it are like, come on, Dash, like tone it down. Like you're not helping. It's basically <laughs> like one of those things where they're trying to guide him into being more helpful. But I hope he doesn't change at all. Yeah, me neither. I love what Dash is doing. And it's funny, too, because what Dash is doing, it's like if you're on the left and you're not informed on politics, you're not even paying attention to anything. So you're not you don't care. Yeah. You listen to LeBron James, you listen to Taylor Swift. You kind of just like. Go with the flow, coast through it, autopilot. I'm not voting for Trump because he's racist, right? Ge- yeah, generic, like, sounds about right, you know? So it's like that. those people, they're leftist and on the left because they don't follow politics and they don't know enough about it and they just assume it's good versus bad and they're it's, the good guys. It's factory default settings with what the media is telling you, right? Exactly. So they're just going with that. But it's like if you're an informed leftist, which is, like, weird because you have to, like, know about what's going on and then, like – It's like the more you know, the less likely you are to be a leftist. Mm -hmm. So if you do know, like, the FBI raid on Mar-a-Lago was, like, not that great. As a left-leaning person, you shouldn't be, like, cheering that and championing that. You should be like, ugh, it's kind of abuse of power. It doesn't look good right before an election. Yeah, it wasn't a marquee event. Like, Yeah, like, you didn't get him for anything right mm -hmm. before an election. You'd kind of be like, eh. So it's weird because Dash has this thing where he'll never have, like, a real audience because if his audience was informed and paying attention to politics— they would be more right leaning or more fair and normal. So all you can have is like the people who are asleep, but the people who are asleep aren't following political Instagrams. Yeah. So he's like in this tough spot where all he can do is just be like a caricature Muppet for people on the right to make fun of. Yeah. Which I love. That's we, why we use him. People have been telling us to make Dash merch as well, like stickers, like, oh boy, like with one of his most manic faces. So, I mean, we might have to. He might be an AI made up person who's not even real. That's true. That's true. That's no true. argument here. <laughs> That's true. All right. Uh, last piece of housekeeping. This is an abbreviated housekeeping because we have so many important things to get to. Last piece of housekeeping. Uh, you know how Native Americans back in the day used to say they didn't want to take photos because they thought it would steal your soul? Yeah. And you, everyone hears that and they go like, oh, it's kind of like a dumb way to look at it. It's not true. Yeah. I think it's true. Okay. Like if you're in front of a camera and similar to like last time we talked about the Mets game and people giving their taking videos instead of enjoying the game and they're yeah. giving their human experience away to AI and they're like feeding the AI their human experience. Of course. I think it's basically that. And the Native Americans were right. And it's like the more you're in front of a camera, the least the less authentic you are. And the less authentic you are, it's like you're putting on like this thing and this contrived thing. And then that is kind of like a soul stealing thing especially video. Mm -hmm. So it's like we do a show once a week, and I think it's to slow burn the sucking of our souls. Okay, fair. And if you work- Uh, You know know what the biggest example is? Mm. Um, I feel like Stephen Colbert or like late night hosts. Yeah. They're just down. They're like their energy is sucked, and they're just like keep cashing the $10 million Exactly. Stephen Colbert, five days a week, goes in front of the camera, lies, puts on this whole show, pretends- deceives, misleads like millions of people. Yeah. And then it's like, you tell me it doesn't affect your soul. And it's like, if you work for a corporation, especially, they'll just be like, oh, sign a contract. Cool. You're doing a show five days a week. And it's like, they're not looking out for your soul. They're looking out for the money. They they're wanna, not looking up for that mental health and yeah, all that. They want to wring you dry. So basically, the more you're in front of camera, the more susceptible you are to getting your soul sucked and losing your soul. And if you work for a company, they're like, hey, five days a week, your soul's gone. If you're like us and you're smart and you're aware of it, you do one a week and we slowly give our soul away. <laughs> but then, I mean, that it applies to like Tucker Carlson too then, your theory. It applies to your favorite guy. 
Yeah, but I think it's I think the soul goes slower if you're telling the truth. <laughs> what well, he got out of it, got out of it. He almost pinned me down. <laughs> Fully but I fair. Got out of it. The soul goes sl- away slower if you're <clears throat> telling the truth. If you're telling lies, zapped up. I don't generally feel soul sucked uh, being on this podcast and stuff like that, but um, there definitely is like a, I'm not looking to go talk and make friends after this. I'm like done for the day, you yeah, know, obviously. Me too. The day of the, the, and the day after, I'm pretty much sucked out. Yeah. Which is just what it is. Yeah. Uh, I it do takes it for energy. you guys. Yeah. I do it for you guys. I hope you're buying the underwear and <laughs> the brave books or whatever. All right, moving on. We have a really important cringe of the week. Richard Rapoy has been obsessed with this shop teacher from Canada with these massive milkers. I know everyone's already seen it. Yeah. So we have a little bit of a special take. Um, I'm losing friends. I'm not reaching out to family anymore. Uh, Work. um, It's taking a toll on my work. Course. I'm just obsessed with the big titty shop teacher. That's all Richard Rapway thinks about. Mm-hmm. I wake up, I make a meme. I wake up, I make another meme. I, I go to sleep, I'm thinking about it. So, um, yeah. yeah, Richard Rapway, you want to go get some food? And he's like, uh, for the for the milker guy. For when, what, when, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> when do the milkers come? Yeah, what's um, the milker guy in that? Process? No, and and. Uh, it's funny because I've posted so many memes, so many memes about this, and people are like, "Well, I guess we know Richard Ratboy's a, a breast guy or a, t- a tits man," and it's like, "You think that's what this is about, guys? You just uh, like them, however they come." Yeah, like no, uh, I like the freak nature of it and the fact that nobody's standing up to this person. And this is in—we will give context for people who haven't been following, but it's in Ontario, Canada, and this is basically like a wood shop, like physical hands-on project teacher. I don't know what the class is actually called. Um, but this person used to be a man like as recently as last year. Now, uh, they're taking advantage of the transgender and gender ideology protections that Canada has, Mm -hmm. the laws, and they put on some just, I think we may have found it and we'll put it up on screen. They put on some Z cup silicone breastplate prosthetics. 400 bucks. It's 307. Yeah. 300 bucks. Pretty expensive. Those Z cup, to be honest, I think they're bigger. I don't know. I, I I'm making my best Z's. guess. So they're double Z's, I think. Yeah, it easily could be. But uh, the nipples are protruding, very disrespectful. And so all these kids just have to go with it. And the school is kind of standing by and defending this person because it's an expression of gender identity. Yeah. And it's just getting so greasy. And I love it because it's like, this is the slippery slope we were talking about. Uh, trans people and whatever, They ha- this is their team now. So they have to fight with this person, this fetish guy. Yeah. Um, and Tucker did a big monologue That's on it. That's what too. it is. It's a fetish thing. Yeah. He, he gets off. He gets off He's on this. He's getting off. He likes it. He wanted he, he you wanted to get caught. Yeah. And it's like the thing in from Bane, like, was getting caught part of your plan? Like, of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. This guy wanted to get caught. Yeah. He wears this thing. It's so obnoxious. You wanted the attention and you get off. He gets off. And then some guy on Twitter, some blue check, who I don't know. Peter Bogosian? Yeah. He said, most people have strong moral impulses about whether this individual should be allowed to teach their children in a public school, but very few can construct a good argument why or why not. It's more difficult than you think. Try it. Okay. I'll try it. Big fake cans. (laughs) (laughs) Done. That's the argument. There's really no need to discuss this, guys. Yeah. Not normal. Big fake cans. Too much. Dude. <laughs> I'll add to it. Dude. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not it's not a, a hard argument. It's just big fake cans. Mm-mm. Sk- kids, big fake cans. Mm-mm. So, that's it. Yeah, that's it. It's really that simple, Peter. We don't need a, a theoretical debate on this inherently. <laughs> yeah. In regards in to regard, inherently. Yeah. Um, but so there a couple other pieces that I want to touch on this, right? So the I bet phys- there's some pieces of it you want to touch yeah. on this. Yeah, I'm a big boob guy. Like, what do you stop it? Um, so A, the physical realities of wearing this, this giant prosthetic breastplate. Heavy, sweaty, disgusting, stinky. And, and it's like a 50-year-old man, right? Or whatever this guy is. Um, silicone on your body, sweating, working the saw. And then I'm sure there's days, honestly, where this guy goes. I'm in a little too deep. I don't want to wear it today. Like, I'm feeling uncomfortable. I got a rash. There's a rash on my lower back. 
and he just still has to do it because he committed to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You so can't now, downgrade him. It's handcuffed. He's handcuffed into these A giant, golden handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> to these giant milkers. Um, and so that's one. And then the other part is like everybody who's taken a wood shop class in high school, usually the teacher is one of the most manly guys there is. Who like knows how to work all the tools. Knows and- how to work all the tools. He's kind of like, he's not PC. Like we're, we're just fine with it because he does a great job and the kids learn and they come together. Um, that's so true. All they, the other teachers wear like a tie and like a shirt and the, this guy wears like jeans. Flannel and jeans, yeah. 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 Um, and you know, the kids all come together and they all build a birdhouse at the end of the semester. Um, so they've subverted that as well. The typically masculine role of the shop teacher. Now all these, and it's a mostly guys class if you've seen some of the pictures. They just come in and they laugh and they take secret picks. I'm trying to find someone who goes to this school to get me daily update picks. So if you know anybody, please reach out. It's an emergency. Um, Richard Rapoy needs more photos of it. He really do, wants them. Do we want to go through the names? Yeah. So we did a crowdsource of all the best names. Uh, Richard Rapoy posted to his story. Uh, here's some of the best names we got for this monster milkers man. Uh, Donnie Parton, classic. Uh, Mammaries. With the apostrophe. With the apostrophe for ma'am, Mammaries. A um, couple of these are just slurs that I <laughs> that I can't fully read. Uh, Mix Milkers. Yeah, that's my favorite. Mix Milkers is the best. And whoever sent that, whoever sent that and can prove it, because I have it in my Instagram DMs. Yeah. We'll send you a base We'll mug. send you a base mug. That's, that. that's the best one. Uh, Chesty Molesty, more slurs, mentally damaged <laughs> degenerate, uh, and Transy Pelosi. Yeah. Those are some of the best names we got for this person that Richard Rapway is obsessed with for whatever reason. If you have more. Please comment them because we're yeah. always looking to expand. Comment them below and we'll expand. Next clip, Cringe of the Week. We're still in it. That was just our first set, part of Cringe of the Week. We have a huge Cringe of the Week this week. Uh, the kid's wearing the makeup and gets the creepy comments on TikTok. This one's bad. This is from Base Latin, our boy. To wear makeup. <laughs> so you like it? Yeah. And I do a good job? Yeah. Can you look here and, and do some poses so I can see it? Standard bo- little boy doing makeup, I'm weird TikTok awesome mom, little weird TikTok eye. mom, confusing the little boy. But then look who we got here. What does that say? Yes. Yes. Makeup has no gender. Love this. Creepy guy. Boys are allowed to wear makeup. Always be yourself. Creepy old man. Cutest thing I've seen all day. Weird worker. Have to say he's adorable with or without makeup. These creepy people commenting that. What would you, why would you enjoy a kid, a little boy wearing makeup if you're like a 50 something year old guy? Boys are allowed to wear makeup. Love. I love it. You look wonderful. Beautiful from this guy. These creepy people. I adore him too. This is awesome. Beautiful. Someone just says beautiful. Pretty from this guy. Yes, that's amazing. Such an adorable kid. I'm so glad he's trying out himself without judgment. Love him. So all these creepy guys are commenting on the post like compliments, but like creepy compliments because you're talking about a kid. Very, you'd think the FBI would maybe, (laughs) I know they're busy, but you'd think that they'd maybe look into something like this. And if you had like a list of like creepers and you're like, all right, who are the creepers? And you were going to go through social media and try and find out. I feel like that's kind of where you would start and what you would do. That's where the first thread that I'd be pulling on to get to a P uh, to get to a pedo. I'm not saying any of those guys are, Yeah, but there's a likeliness ratio happening. There is a likeliness ratio. There is a thing where it's like, if you're looking at certain things and commenting on certain things, you Not, tend to have yeah. proclivities elsewhere. Yeah. And then there's a bombshell report. Whistleblower claims the FBI is moving agents off child sex abuse investigations to pursue political investigations and reclassifying January 6 cases as domestic terrorism originating in field offices around the country, not in D.C., so the FBI is super busy. They're not looking into the, the predator stuff. They're not really worried about the kids. I guess the kids are all safe. They're worried about reclassifying January 6th people 
as domestic terrorists. January 6th was what, six years ago at this point? At least three years ago. Dude. Four years ago. Now we're still, I guess that's what the FBI is worried about. Yeah. And not, not the fresh abuse cases that are happening everywhere. Yeah, exactly. So I guess the FBI is busy. This is what they're up to. Yeah. Uh, that video got me severely creeped out, though. Like those faces to the comments. Yeah. That physiogeny. Mm, physiogeny. I, I, I didn't like any of that. Yeah, me neither. Doesn't sit well with me. Uh, next clip teacher with the pronouns, day one. Yeah, this is bad. Some tips to help you learn your students' pronouns. Are you a boy or a girl? Here's what you can do instead. Here, I like to use a Google form or a Microsoft form or any other survey app that works for you. I've stopped asking what your preferred pronouns are, and instead I say what are your pronouns because your pronoun is part of your identity and not just a personal preference. One of the very important questions I like to ask is, may I use these pronouns in front of your parents or guardians? The reason why... Interesting. So day one, the teacher finds out which kids are kind of not all there, maybe have some issues, and then say... What can I hide from your parents? What can you and I, what secret can you and I share and keep away from your parents? Day one. Day one. It's not good to say, are you a boy or a girl? It's like, if you're the teacher, wouldn't you kind of know what everyone is? Yeah. Isn't would. everyone pretty much what they are? Mm -hmm. But then you open this door and then you say, oh, should I keep this from your parents? And if you have a kid who's like fighting with their parents or has some trouble at home, it's like that kid will find refuge in a teacher like that. And ideas like this, and then it spirals them into being massive milkers when they grow up. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, and then the that, that's the thing. It's like you don't ask the kids pronouns on day 40. It's day one yeah. that he's asking to keep a secret from your parents. Really so. sets the tone for the whole year. Thanks, buddy. So uh, day one, he's asking to keep secrets from your parents, and then he's posting about it online. Great. Yeah, appreciate it. There was another article that came out that basically said if you don't put your um, you experts say yeah. not including pronouns in your bio, comma email signature are sign of bigotry. Yeah, so they're just really waving in this idea, and that's what they're doing in the schools. We uh, knew that's where it was yeah, headed, though, right? We I mean, always knew it's where it they was pressured headed. all the millennial girls into she/her on their Instagram bios. And yeah. we knew it was headed towards bigotry. So they basically take like what they call a disenfranchised group, the trans people, the LGBTs, the sexually confused, whatever. And they lead block with them and they push them all the way forward and pretend whatever their ideas are, are mainstream and normal, that girls are boys, boys are girls. It's all the same. It's all fine. Yep. And then it's not actually to help the people who are having mental problems. It's to now isolate, and isolate, identify, identify divide the groups into mm -hmm. bigots and non-bigots. So if you don't have your pronouns in your bio, you're a bigot. And that's what the whole point was. The whole point was just to divide the groups, people who are for it and against it. And if you're against it, you're a bigot. You hate trans people. You want kids to kill themselves, whatever the horrible thing they'll say about you. And all they're really trying to do is just get attack their political opponents in different ways. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. And then also it's like uh, this, the big back to the big titted. I, I hate to keep going back. You can't help yourself. I can't help myself. <laughs> but it's like, that, that's the thing. Uh, again, with all this misdirection and stuff, it's like, all right, say you have like a order of operations, right? I have the, I have enough energy to go to three protests this week and two school board meetings. And it's like, you wasted one with the plastic tits silicone teacher. That shouldn't have even got to me. <laughs> yeah. That shouldn't have bubbled up to my level, right? And now they're printing money off and, you know, doing other things that it's like, okay, whatever. You're focused on that. You know, you don't have the energy to do everything. And so- they these little bullshit ones like they suck up the bandwidth top. like they exactly. suck up the bandwidth so if anything important actually happens it's like we'll get to it after we deal with the the massive milkers <laughs> yeah exactly so. so that's what the kids are learning in schools that's not what you should be teaching your kids hopefully your kids aren't involved in the school system if they are you probably need an alternative which is why we are happy to be sponsored this week by Brave Books guys Brave Books mm -hmm. is an anti woke book company that makes books that teach great lessons to your kids. It's not gonna be the woke stuff, the LGBT and the trans stuff, the BLM stuff. It's gonna be lessons and values that matter to you most. This is an America first company that cares about the fundamental truths that we all should share and you know create our communities around. So Brave Books has gone out there and made an entire line of books dedicated to that. They just released a new one, uh, Plot Against the King, 2000 Mules, which is about a king who is overthrown it's a fantastic read. It was written by Cash Patel. It's got the endorsement from President Trump. If you're looking to get your kids some very cool books that teach good lessons and aren't going to subvert them, 
bravebooks.us is the website. That's the way to do it. Go check it out today. There's a monthly subscription. You can do a monthly subscription. We get a new book every month. You can buy a bundle. So there's multiple options. Check out bravebooks.us. That's the website. Link is in the description. Go get some books today. Give them to your kids. Don't let them get tricked and deceived by these woke teachers. Get them an order from Brave Books. It's very important. We are still in cringe. Next, there's an article about uh, from the Irish Times. Why don't you read it? I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it. Yeah, it says uh, it's a picture of a woman, and it says, "I am a gay man in a straight woman's body. If I were to speak to my husband about this, it could end our marriage." So you wrote an article and publicly released an article about it. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you thought you, if your husband finds out, he'll hope, freak out. Hope my husband doesn't read the Irish Times. Yeah, but then you wrote an article. You, that's what the f- first plan of action to break it to your husband. So that person is a gay man in a woman's body. Yep. So she's attracted to men. Either but way. She, but she can't get a gay man because gay men are attracted to women. Exactly. So we kind of have to hope she's a bottom. Mm. to keep it going with her husband and keep it working. Hopefully she's a bottom. Because if she's a top, it's not like you're going to really. It'll never work. Yeah. You're going to have to start changing it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. This is just another thing. Like, look over here. Waste your energy on this. You know, like, how dare you? Yeah. You know? So very sad for could've, that They, they could have written an article about some sort of like uh, pharmaceutical company in Ireland that's been spraying the crops or doing something. Nope, they gave it to the woman who feels like a guy and she doesn't want her husband to know. Right? Yeah, they're eating up all this space on important things. That's what's important. It's like these a days. filibuster. <laughs> it's just they're just talking and they're going, blah, 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 blah. This is the news. And if you read like 10 news stories and like five of them are like absolutely insane stuff like this, and then like two of them are the weather, it's like, <laughs> yeah. what, and one what is sports? <laughs> and one sports, it's like, does no no one know anything anymore? Is the whole world just this like weird LGBT stuff now? Yeah. That's what this whole show has become. Well, you know, we're actually exposing it, and this is the this is the propaganda, and we're the answer to the propaganda, yeah. right? So but we don't enjoy this. Richard Rappoy enjoys the massive milkers guy. That's just a personal thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next is the fat phobic girl, the fat phobia person. Yeah, let's let her run. Mm. Hi everyone. This is just a friendly reminder that if a fat person is talking about their own experience with the fat phobia, their own experience with their body, with their fat body, their larger body, their plus size body, whatever they fucking want to call it, that when a fat person is talking about their own shit, their own experience, whatever the fuck it is, that's not an invitation for thin people to insert themselves in a conversation that's not about them. Just so you know. Because when a marginalized person, yes, because fat people are marginalized, if you don't fucking understand that, then look at intersectionality and the different intersections, because body size is one of them. Back to the point, it's not an invitation for thin people to just enter into the space of fat people to talk about themselves. So, fat people are marginalized. Marginalized means what? Made to feel small? (laughs) Isn't that no, no, irony? Marge, is Marge, that irony? Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, a little bit. Kind of. A little bit. I'll count it. I'll count it. Counts. Um, my initial instinct after seeing this video is uh, this woman just had an interaction with a thin person where she said, actually, it's just calories in and calories out. And then the fatty didn't have any, <laughs> any didn't stand up for herself in that conversation. So went and did a rant about yeah, it. Yeah. Had instead. to do a rant. Uh, this person. Exactly. It's like anything besides accountability. So it's like, I'm marginalized. Skinny people are getting in the way of our conversations. You wouldn't understand a fat person, fat body. I, as a fat person with a fat body, know what it's like. And it's not really about other people. I just keep eating. I just keep <laughs> eating the food. <laughs> yeah. Which is why I'm going to the gym after we work out. I'm working out with Chinese Donut Boy. We're doing, I joined the gym with him. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Do you know I joined the gym with him? Uh, I went the other day and I was doing the row machine and I broke the row machine. Day one, you broke a machine and it made the loudest sound and everyone looked over. And then I kind of just like got up and walked out. Like <laughs> that was like it for me. And then nice I, first impression. And then I felt bad because I'm like with my my younger brother and I'm like, did I not make like did I not do the right thing by like just walking out? So I had to email the 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 gym email, but it wasn't even like the gym. It was like Anytime Fitness. So it's like. Yeah. Info at any time. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally that. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I was on the machine by the Stairmaster. The handle broke. 
So I had to make sure I did the right thing. But yeah, as a, I'm not marginalized. She puts the margarine, margarine, yeah, <laughs> marginalized. <laughs> puts the margarine and marginalized. All right. Well, but, and that, hold on. I want to say this too because that's just a theme with everybody. Like, you can't if you're not this person, if you're not black, if you're not gay, if you're not morbidly obese, you can't come in and have your bits on this. Like, mm. they want to exclude all opinions, and it's like. No, anyone can have an opinion on anything. Yeah. And like, that's the whole point of discourse is exactly. like, my personal experience is this. Oh yeah. Well, when I stopped, I started losing weight and then I started doing cardio and I lost even more. And it's like, no, no, no. We're Same not- with like the trans people where it's like, oh, I, I transitioned. It was a mistake. I'm detransitioning. And it's like, mm, Shh. we don't want to hear from you're you. You're done now. Yeah. We your just want to highlight the people that are in the peak of their bad spirals. Exactly. Yeah. And I also, I obviously make jokes be saying I'm fat. I know it's a joke. I yeah, you're skinny. <laughs> yeah, you're skinny. You're light. Hey, I'm fat. I know that, but I also can pretty much always bench two twenty five for ten. Easy. So it's like I know I'm fat. I know when you get back in the gym, I'm going back to the gym, but I can always bench two twenty five for ten. That ain't nothing. Yeah, I used to be able to do it a couple of months ago. I was doing it for twenty five, twenty six. You got to get back to that. Got to get back to that. And I've stopped working out for like a couple months. We moved, whatever, no excuses. Now I'm probably doing 225 for 10, but we're going to keep training that. 225 for 25 to 30, you can't really. That's Coppacoolic status. Yeah, see you there. Yeah, exactly. Well, actually, I won't. I've never done that. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, next, abortion party freak. Yeah, let's let her rip. This is the cousin of the marginalized fat <laughs> lady. <laughs> yeah. Straight up, though, if I ever have to have an abortion, you bet I'm gonna have a fucking party. I'm like gonna have like cupcakes with like aborted fetuses drawn on them, lots of snacks, lots. I'm gonna come up with some sort of cocktail and call it the aborted fetus. And me and all of my friends are just gonna hang out, eat a bunch of yummy dead fetus. Sorry, guys. No matter how much you beg or plead with her, she's pregnant with your baby. She's having an abortion, and she's going to have a party after. No matter how much you plead, no matter how much you beg her not to, she's going to have the abortion, guys. Sorry. You want to you wanna know the funny thing that I just noticed about this? Huh? She's sitting in a subway, and she has a hair thing, a subway hair tie in that she's playing with. She's filming this video at work. Mm. Talking about <laughs> abortions. She's on break. Yeah. Talking about her fantasies of drinking uh, an abortion drink. Yeah. So this is how she gets attention. She doesn't get it from being smart or beautiful or being a chemist or something. Nope. She gets it from doing like shock value anti-God stuff. Yeah. And it's bad because if we had a debate like a Taliban person. Mm -hmm. They'd get us on this. I I would be like, I agree with you on this point. I concede that point. Yeah. The the, the women, this woman. The milkers are wrong. (laughs) This woman is off base. This woman's You're right, Mr. Taliban. (laughs) You're right on that one. So... (laughs) So it's hard to win an argument with the Taliban because of people like this, which yeah. is unfortunate for us. Yeah, 100%. All right, final uh, video of Cringe. This is a long Cringe of the Week, but I loved it. Yeah. Final video of Cringe of the Week. Uh, Post Malone. Takes a spill. Fell on stage. Ugh. Oh, and he's writhing on the ground. Uh, it's like a bad dream in front of everybody just watching you like in pain in the center of like thousands of people. And then his music is still playing in the background for a while. Oh man, that's rough. You see that a lot. Performers, uh, and this is not our usual cringe of the week. Yeah, you're this cringing is, from the. This is cringe because you go, ah, ow, that hurts. Yeah, but you see that all the time. Performers need stage awareness on like th- those falls. They're constantly on elevated platforms. So I feel for you, Post Malone. I'm sorry yeah, that yeah. happened to you. Who put that hole there? That was bat poor design, I would say. Very poor design. All right, that's our cringe of the week this week. That was a great one. Going into our next section, our urban decay section. Uh, so a lot of people have seen this clip from Urban Decay. It was the crazy guy in the McDonald's who got into a fight and then eventually took out an axe and started smashing up the McDonald's yeah. and almost attacked people. Yeah, threatened them menacingly at least and got in their faces and made them beg. So everyone's seen it. It's playing here now. Uh, it starts off with a punch. He throws the first punch. Yeah, he, he throws the punch. He throws the first punch. He's like a crazy unhinged guy. Throws the first punch. 
the people start fighting back at him. Three guys are like punching him in the head, trying to knock him out. He's not even defending. Yeah. Reasonable. And he's like so messed up or on drugs or drunk that he just like takes the punches and like, yeah, see. And then he goes and grabs an axe out of his bag and he comes back here. He starts smashing it up, smashing the table, smashes the glass in front of everybody. Everyone's freaking out. And then here's what's crazy. He got arrested for this. And he got released immediately. No bail. No bail. And now people in the news are interviewing him and saying he's the victim. Check out this interview. Michael Palacio tells me he has zero regrets for doing this Friday morning. Most important thing is don't be afraid to defend yourself. Michael tells me things went south at this McDonald's on Delancey Street after a security guard ignored his request to use the bathroom. He maintains words were exchanged with the customer. Then things escalated. Michael, he admits he had been drinking, threw a punch. There was plenty of pushing and shoving with three men who then turned on him. Video shows Michael on the receiving end of... So there he is getting hit. And they're trying to make it like he's the victim. He was getting hit. Then he took his axe out to defend himself. And Baller Alert, who we've covered in the past, they posted this whole thing. McDonald's axe man said he was the one defending himself when he pulled out a weapon, which is interesting. And everyone's pretending that he's the victim and he was just doing self-defense, which makes me wonder, what about this part when you get into the girl's face and slam the table right in front of her and you're a foot away yelling in her face. And it's pure intimidation with someone who doesn't have a weapon. Yeah, and it's a girl. Is that part of the self-defense too? So now everyone's jumping to defend this guy. And it's like he was like a drugged out, drunk, whatever, street rat adjacent person with a weapon. He's got those giant ears with the holes in them. Yeah, but now he's the victim and he's saying that, you know, don't be afraid to defend yourself. And uh, the, the interesting phrase is zero regrets. Zero? Yeah. You couldn't, you don't regret not de escalating the situation. You don't regret maybe going to a different restaurant, you know, Mm -hmm. or something like that. You don't regret the, all the vandalism you did. You know, it's just kind of like that, that mentality like, I can do no wrong. Whatever happened, happened. I was angry. Yeah. I was Hulk, you know? Yeah. He, he couldn't control himself. He, He snapped. And it's like, if yeah, if it was about self defense, the whole thing was about self defense and something happened. First you of all, back out of the yeah, McDonald's. You leave. Yeah. Here's him like going and trying to get in. They're trying to hold him back before any punches were thrown. There was a nice 30 second hatchet grabbing, too, right? He, oh, yeah. Exactly. He went into his bag to grab his hatchet. He wasn't being attacked. He could have just left. Yeah. Here's him trying to get in to go fight. He could have just left. And then he eventually throws the first punch. So this guy is the victim after all that. And everyone else just stands around. Those guys try to stop him. But people just, uh, you know, stand around. You could have, if this was in Texas. Oh, someone could have easily. Someone could just go. Even in New York, he was wielding a hatchet officer. I had to, I I was fear for my life. (laughs) I fear for my life. Yeah. He does it like an old timer, like where you brace it. (laughs) (laughs) He just goes, ding. 100% could have. Yeah. And that would have been real Mm -hmm. self-defense. But I guess people just stand around now. Uh, There's a Chick-fil-A worker. This is from last week, but we didn't get to cover it. Yeah. Chick-fil-A worker wrestles a thief to the ground. This guy tried to steal from a lady. Yep. He tried to carjack this woman and her baby. And, and her the, baby. And then the, well, he wanted to take the car. The woman was with her baby. So the Chick-fil-A workers. He gets him in a guillotine. He's going hard. And this is kind of like a, he starts the fire. He doesn't do nothing. And then everyone swarms, right? Yeah. But even when everyone swarms, it's like not enough support. Really? People are, like, scared. People are unsure. People don't jump in. Like, in 1950, say 1950, a lady gets carjacked with a baby in it. Mm -hmm. I would say 9 out of 10 able-bodied men in that area run over, swarm, beat the guy up, hold him down until the cops come. 2022, 1 in 10. Or 1 in 20. Yeah. The guy from Chick-fil-A. It has to be Everyone else kind of just like, I don't know what happened. Or, like, what's going on? Call the police who aren't going to come. Yep. I wasn't positive. Everyone's just soft and they're scared and they don't they don't want to like interact with certain people a certain way. They don't know what to do. They're just kind of like, oh, everything kind of just happens. I don't. Uh, uh, uh. And it's the opposite. It's like the opposite of what's needed. I remember last week, the guy who came and corrected the pit bull attacking the Clydesdale. Yeah, that's the one in 10, one in 20 now, whatever it is. Yeah. So we don't have any uh, – no no one wants to do the right thing anymore. And it's also – you can't blame them 
Because if you're in these like Democrat cities and you go shoot the guy with the axe at the McDonald's, like you're the George Soros DA is probably going to get you in trouble. Yeah. You're going to have to, you, you have a bail. Yeah. You have bail. So there's like so many things working against the people. It's like the institutions are against them. So you can't do the right thing. The food is against them. Their testosterone's low. No one works out. The women are whores. <laughs> it's just like everything's working around to make the men really, really weak. And then you kind of get like a litmus check, like margin call on how weak the men are when something like this happens and one person steps up. For sure. It's very scary. It's very scary. Uh, next car show, KO. This is good. Yeah, this is kind of an update. Somebody sent me this because of how we talked about the previous car show and how much of a nightmare scene it is where people will film you before helping you. Of course. And this is the next level. Guy gets hit, flattened, knocked out cold. <laughs> so they come over, <laughs> check his pockets, trying to rob him. <laughs> this Immediately got goes to the <laughs> pocket. They punch him in the face. And you, you, punch, you try to knock out the already knocked out guy. That's it. Who That's is that guy? <laughs> the FBI needs to find that guy. It's like, yeah, we got exactly. We got a we got a guy. He's definitely a bad guy. Here's him doing something bad in a moment of stress. We need to do something good. Get him. Nope. <laughs> like that's what I'm saying. It, it, I, I don't even know what to say. Like that guy, whatever he's up to, he shouldn't be there. Yeah, he should be in prison or something. Like anybody who would do that to someone, yeah, should be gone. Exactly. Next, let's go to Portland for the next one. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a little bit of a drive-through on a street in Portland. We'll blur this. I don't know if we can show this. We can't really show up. We're gonna blur it because his butt's out. But there's just a Portland street. There's just a guy laying on the ground and he shit everywhere, like and biohazard just, level, just blown out. But. And what people have to go walk to school, go to work, ride the bus. And that's what's going on in the streets. Last week, we spoke about San Francisco a little bit. There was an, uh, we did a bunch of stats. There was an updated stat. Half of San Francisco residents have been robbed in the last five years. Robbed. Not surprised. <laughs> so great. And then there was a uh, little bit of an update in uh, L.A. There was a police dog uh, that got brought to Skid Row. They found a bunch of drugs. They found 70K in cash, a bunch of, gu bunch of guns, and they found two- 70K in cash? 70K in cash. I did not know that. Which is interesting, because if you're in that, I used to live over there, and you can go rob those guys and what, find cash? Yeah, get the tent. Yeah, all right. <laughs> this envelope of cash looks good. Um, two pounds of fentanyl were found as well. Uh, two milligrams of fentanyl is enough to kill a person. There's 453,592 milligrams in a pound. So times that by two and then divided by two, the two pounds of fentanyl that were found on Skid Row was enough to kill 453,592 people, which is... All from one tent in Skid Row. One tent in Skid Row, enough fentanyl to kill almost half a million people. Wow. So that's what's going on over there. No what's need the to FBI investigate. doing again? Yeah, they're, they're looking at January 6th boomers. It's actually ATF probably, <laughs> but still... But they're looking at January 6 boomers who got ushered who walked into the in. yeah <laughs> who got ushered into the Capitol. They're going after Simone Gold, who's a doctor. Yeah, everyone else they're good to go. No one gets in trouble. Very crazy. Yeah. Uh, and then last second to last clip, Portland. It's yeah. Back to Portland. We got another Portland. So we did last week. We covered the person who went in the other person's house. The guy who was on the ground. The guy woke up and there was like a homeless guy in his house. Yeah, it's happened again. Yeah, check this one out. That describes a disturbing encounter, finding a stranger curled up in her 10-year-old's bed Tuesday. Smith says she was on her back deck when her dog started to go crazy. The mother tells us she ignored them for a minute because no one rang the bell. But ring cam video shows that's because the intruder walked right in. Smith says she decided to investigate when her dogs kept barking, thinking it might have been a mouse. But when I got close enough, I realized it was a body, and I thought it was my husband. Uh, 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 Gail? Watch Gail, as she calls his Gail. name, before realizing the person in bed is not her husband, but a barefoot intruder. Smith says the woman then picked up an ottoman and chucked it at her, before running away. And while she tells us the home invader was later picked up by police, she says her home was only the second of three to be hit by the suspect that day. So they threw an ottoman at you. 
Then the cops picked him up. They've been doing this. The person's probably back out on the streets already. Guaranteed. So this is like the new trend now. The homeless people just go in your house, and then you call the cops, and they don't come, I guess? They don't come, and then in Illinois, they can't remove them, right? Mm. Isn't that the rule? So they go, oh, that's kind of on you. Uh, you don't have any weapons also, hopefully, because you're not allowed to get them. So you can't defend yourself. You can't call the cops. You can't really remove them. Yeah. That kind of it's like kind of like a perfect storm for street rats doing whatever they want and taking over. It's a good time to be a street rat. It's I don't think anybody's time. arguing with that. Yeah, they're making it easy. Um, and the funny thing to me is like this woman has a security camera set up clearly in her house, and it's got a camera in her son's room, um, but the front door is unlocked. Yeah, you know? those days are over. Can't yeah yeah. Any town USA, it's deadbolt town USA <laughs> yeah, now. Exactly. Guys. It's done. Last clip of Urban Decay, 18-year-old killed for being a Republican. Yeah, so a 41-year-old man named Shannon Brandt confessed to a 911 dispatcher that he killed 18-year-old Kaylor Ellingson due to a political dispute. Said he was a right-wing extremist. and 18-year-old uh, kid, right-wing eight, extremist. 18-year-old kid in North Dakota. Ran him over this car, killed him. Fled and the scene. Fled the scene. Then it, made a call later. And then got released on a 50K bail bond. Yeah. 50K he, for killing up. an 18 year old. And he had some quote that was like, oh, you know, I'm really concerned about my family and my job and all this. And I have all this. And that's why I need bail. It's like, then why'd you kill a kid over a political? Is, I think that's, is that, um, is that white privilege? When you kill somebody and get let out in the same day for not a huge amount of bail and you kill a teenager and no one cares? I guess. I don't know. It's some sort of privilege. It's <laughs> some sort of privilege there. If you're going to make a case, it's here. But, um, yeah, and as we've seen, like, what what news networks do you think this guy watches? Yeah, MSNBC, CNN. He loves Don Maddow. Lemon loves Maddow. He loves Rachel. He goes, oh, she's just like one of the guys. Dash. <laughs> yeah, no. So, I mean. Dash, Joe Biden's speech a couple weeks ago with the red in the background, mm -hmm. stuff like that, like, feeds the people. Where they see it on Rachel Maddow, they see it on Don Lemon, they see it in the Dash Dabrowski's of the world. And then when you hear the president say oh, the MAGA extremists and whatever, it's kind of like, oh, doot, shoot, doot. like it's all true. Doot, doot. Yeah. Like the president, like stand, activate, stand back and stand by, but the other way. Yeah. And, and then regardless, too, it's like even if this – like what are you doing? You're a 41-year-old guy arguing with a teenager and then you're – and then you're, you can't control yourself. Oh, he's a MAGA extremist. They're going to be on my side after I took care of this. Extremist. I'll, I'll tell the 911 dispatcher. But it's like, dude – you can't walk away, and now this kid who had a bright future and uh, you know parents who loved him and stuff is dead now because your your brain doesn't work that good. You you're a loser. Got tricked. Yeah, you it's got tricked sad. by Joe Biden. And the bail is fifty k, which seems yeah. a little light. January six people who walked around the Capitol probably have hundreds of thousands of dollars in bail. Yeah, no, they're just in solitary. They're yeah. in solitary. They're locked up. They're no bail for two years. Yeah, for trespassing. But then this guy, huh, let him back out. Yep. And North Dakota, too. I, I always like to point out what states this is happening what's, in. What's her name doing? Christy Nome? Yeah. I think she's South Dakota. It's close enough. Christy, make a, hop make over. Make a fucking call. I think she had back surgery, and she's, like, out of commission. Ah, okay. Um, but anyway, that, that's the point. It's, like, North Dakota, all, you know, trans, drag story hour in Iowa, the, in Nebraska, Louisville. You know, it's all over the place now, and uh, no one's safe from these lunatics. Yeah, for real. All right, let's not get too depressed. Let's not get too down. Do not fret. We are coming into our uplifting gold section. First clip of uplifting gold. Uh, Alabama cake guy. This is not uplifting. Guy loves Alabama. Got an Alabama cake. The cake insides are the opposing team's colors. Smash cake! Smash cake! The really guy loves Alabama. <laughs> I don't think that's uplifting at all. It's like the wife was doing a bit on him. Yeah. And he ruined the cake. Now no one has cake. Because he likes Alabama so much. Too much. Can't eat purple and yellow. That's LSU color. Can't eat purple and yellow cake. I, he didn't Alabama. even think about it. He just went double hand slap <laughs> down. Cakes were gone. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty interesting. Uh, next, a shark is being tracked. What does it say? 
Yeah, I'll post an image up there, but uh, basically it's one of these big sharks. Uh, 1,400 pounds, 13 foot great white shark has been cruising around the Florida coast, has inadvertently drawn a picture of himself using his tracking path. So Brett shark, is, yeah, shark, shark drives around, made shark picture. He's a shark. Looks like a shark. Looks like a shark. That's cool. Shark, Anything else to add? Shark made shark picture. Okay. He had to build a body. That's good. He goes out pretty far. Yeah. He had to build his, his stomach. Yeah. He built the fin. Shark makes shark picture. That's good. Up That's it? That's it for Mio? Yeah. I don't, <laughs> have, I don't have I much I think he used it. all his energy on an earlier bit. Yeah. I hope it doesn't... I hope that's not like a recurring theme where I get to uplifting gold and I'm just you're quit. You're I'm done. Not, I'm out of stuff. <laughs> no, hey. I have everything written down. Yeah, for I have sure. great. I have great stuff. Next, right. the Walmart customer needs help. This will prove to you. I'm. It's our report. Now pick it up. Attention, Walmart associates. There's customer assistance needed in the electronics department. I am the customer. That needs the assistance. Thank you very much. There's customer assistance <laughs> needed in the whatever department. I am the customer. <laughs> That's pretty good. If you guys do this and you promote and you plug the podcast, if you go to a Walmart or a Kmart or a Target and you get on the – I don't think this is illegal, right? And you get, and <laughs> I you, hope not. And you get on the phone and you do an announcement, attention, whatever, customers – Cluckus Talks, the podcast, is ranked the best new podcast of all time. Please like, share, and subscribe. All the good stuff. We will send you a base mug. I'll send you a Clinton shirt, yeah. and I'll send you the podcast hoodie, a bundle. That's a level up. Uh, yeah, so you will be handsomely rewarded. Handsomely rewarded for that. Uh, next, the Lady Gaga security. The security guard is protecting Lady Gaga. He's saying, get back, get back. And then he realizes that's not Lady Gaga. That's just a drag queen. <laughs> so the security guard was protecting this, what he thought was Lady Gaga, but it was just some drag queen in the full outfit. That's good stuff. That's good uplifting gold. Not necessarily a great look for Lady Gaga. Not a good look for her that at all. That a drag queen could uh, that's come in and replicate it so closely. Exactly. But if you said to her... Hey, Lady Gaga, this drag queen looks like you. She'd go, yeah, he does. We all look alike. Like, that's good. Like, she wouldn't be like, oh, I look like a man dressed as a woman caricature. She'd be like, yeah, like, it all looks the same. This still frame right here could basically be a meme, too. Yeah. I think I just go, what the fuck? And it's like, where's, what does that mean? Like, where's Lady Gaga? <laughs> yeah. Like, she's getting swarmed <laughs> in the back. She's done. Yeah. I oh, can't imagine man. Lady Gaga actually walks through a crowd like this. Yeah. Ever. He probably saw him and was like, damn, I got to protect Lady Gaga. Yeah, it's just me. <laughs> 40 fans. <laughs> so good. Um, next, Spider-Man Car Girl. Yeah, this this is truly uplifting. Interesting. I would say it's not. A little she bit gets, of a crackhead scene outside of a uh, gas station. We can't, there's Spider-Man music playing that we can't play because of copyright reasons. Bam. She's Spider-Man. She just... Whoo, Lands it, Spider Woman. Look at that. That's good stuff. That's a Spider Man. She made girl. it. Yeah, that she was <laughs> one jump up, dude. Um, crackhead strength, or do you think that's just a regular person? I think that's like a girl who did like track in high school or okay. something. Okay, okay. She that's did like fair. the long jump. And fair. She's trying to just <laughs> Spider Man. I wish the video went longer because I'd love to see the result. Me too. Last clip, uplifting gold, truly uplifting stuff here. Let's end on a nice high note. This is not a bit. Girl fixes the fence with her dad. You got it? Yes. Hey, Larry, uh, it actually ran. Got it. Oh, Isn't that yeah. nice? And she built the fence with her dad to keep the animals they have in that, that they're living off the land with. 
Never gave up. Never gave up. Help from dad. Has a little outfit. Has a little outfit. Takes care of the animals. I think it's an electric fence, so you have to shock the animals if they try and get out. A little bit of a hard lesson there. Yeah, only when they try. Uh, You know, just keep them honest. Yep. And that's it. That's the end of Uplifting Gold. All right. Isn't that nice? That's fair. Anything else we forgot to talk about? We're at the end of the episode. No. Should we circle back? On uh, what? To that Ontario teacher again. (laughs) <laughs> get a few more reps in you can't help yourself people people have been dming me like this is the podcast is going to be insufferable all you're going to do is talk about yeah. this big titted teacher you haven't slept in like three days from this yeah. yeah 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 it's affecting all my relationships i'm telling you man I, I walked in i was in the bathroom and i came downstairs and so he rap boy didn't know i was even like around and i walk in the room and he's going like this <laughs> and i'm like what are you doing and he's like <laughs> oh, uh, he's like, oh, it's like the the Macarena, but he was going, and then he's going, the Macarena. No, man. Hey, this for real. It wasn't the Macarena. I am excited to see what happens with this because if the school board ends up stand by, standing by this person, then we've lost it. We've lost the, you know, any ground we've ever gained in our lives, you know? Yeah. There's no adult all the way up the food chain, uh, principal, vice principal, fat HR lady. You know, obviously yeah. she wasn't going to help anybody. Uh, superintendent, then the district superintendent, and everyone goes, our hands are tied. Yeah, he's good. <laughs> he's good. Shop teacher's good. So, I mean, it's just a crazy case study in uh, modern day lunacy. And if so. they were to fire him for the, the giant cans, mm-hmm. George Soros lawyers would come circling and and make it like a civil rights thing and completely ruin everything. Speaking of George Soros, you know, you saw the headline about the illegal immigrants that DeSantis shipped to Martha's Vineyard are suing uh, DeSantis. That has to guaranteed be George Soros, right? Or an organization that he started that is like, we'll step in, we're suing for you. None of those guys. That's were what like, I'm saying. Actually, my 14th Amendment. So that was exactly. So that was one of like I think the biggest examples of like this is where they backstop you. This is where they step in and they just make it try to make it harder for DeSantis or whatever. Nothing uh, organic. Nothing zero real. Organic. Nope. Nothing about like your civil rights. It's mm-hmm. just like ooh, we have a way to manipulate the system and manipulate the rules in place to and if appeal for the to pee, you know to help this guy. And if I throw six million at it, it'll probably clog up the system for a while. Exactly. So and that's what happens. That's what we're up against. That's what people are trying to do to us. Uh, and I don't know. I don't have any much advice about how to fight back against that except for just control what you can, yeah. keep it 100, have yeah. a family. Recognize it. And then uh, if you're a lawyer, stand up against it, fight against it, do some pro bono work against a George Soros type. Yeah. These things, these problems are so much bigger than a lot of like the individual people that fit, we, that are watching the show and like the things that they see. But it's like if there's ever something in your life where there is like an unjust thing, a thing that doesn't make sense, doesn't look right, I think it's like you have to stand up to that. That's yeah. what people can do. Like, you exactly. Know, don't worry about George Soros. Don't worry about the guy with the huge cans. Don't worry about Martha's Vineyard, illegal immigrants suing. Like you can't really fight against that. But if there's something in your district where they're trying to put a weird book in the school or a teacher who's creepy or whatever, you have to fight those fights. Fight your on battles. A, on a small level. And if everyone's in the mood to fight in a small level, then they don't have the grassroots. And that's a it's a bigger thing to go up against if you're the bad guys. Absolutely. 100. Another episode. Another Fuckus Talks in the books. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. All the good stuff. Shopfuckus.com for the best merch in the game. Bravebooks.us is the website for Brave Books. And also getundertack.com for Undertack. Guys, get that Undertack underwear. Send me screenshots of all of the products you purchased and get a chance to win a base mug. So we'll be doing that. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one. Also, before we go, there's no bonus land this week. We do three bonus lands a month, so this is an off week for bonus land, but we'll be back next week with more bonus land stuff. You will be getting an hour of extra content every month, like we promised. So join bonus land to catch the old episodes and the next ones. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one.